Find an artisan pipe that you absolutely just can't live without. You know, those handcrafted pipes where someone shapes the bowl, drills the hole, sands the pipe, stains the grain, cuts and shapes the stem, and affixes all the accents. So beautiful that you just have to have... Oh, it's $970? Find that factory pipe that you absolutely just can't live without. You know, those handcrafted pipes where someone shapes the bowl, drills the hole, sands the pipe, stains the grain, cuts and shapes the stems, and affixes any and all accents. So beautiful that you just have to have it. Oh, and it's less than $100? Fuck yeah. Well met friends, my name is Adam and this is Get Pipes where we love to pipe. And today's piping is all about the factory pipe. If you've seen any of my older videos, specifically the, the Artisan Spotlight series, follow my Instagram, maybe even listen to my pipe smoking podcast, the Get Pipe Podcast, or have read any of my articles on the NASPC, the Pipe Collector Magazine, you'll probably know that I'm somewhat of a big proponent of, of for the artisan pipes out there. However, life's too short and there are far too many pipes out there to, to dedicate yourself exclusively to, to one side or the other. Instead, well, of course, I recommend pipe smokers to be smoker of all pipes, and that includes the factory-made pipes. Now, some factories out there can produce some pretty expensive pieces, while others have a more inexpensive approach to their line of smoking pipes. Understanding that inexpensive is a relative term, relative to the man or woman's pocket and outlook on pipe smoking. But when we compare the traditional factory pipes to say, the average artisan pipe maker's cost, well, the factory pipe is just significantly cheaper. And cheaper doesn't always mean cheap. And while it absolutely can, I think for the most part, factory pipes can and often do yield premium quality smoking characteristics. But they're just made with several additional hands in the process, as opposed to the artisan who executes every step of the pipe making process on their own. Let's not argue about the ins and outs of artisan pipe making and, and why it might be better than factory pipes, but instead focus on the wonderful pieces that factories produce. Many years ago, as a new pipe smoker around five, six years ago for context, I was looking on the app Let Go, or maybe it was Mercari or some equivalent for tobacco pipes. When I first got into the hobby, I learned a little bit about the sphere and began purchasing old estate pipes, like crazy. I got giddy whenever I would come across one in an antique store. More so the sight of the pipes rather than the hopefulness to purchase, as nine of the ten trips, I'd find a ridiculous asking price for the most beat up, no name basket pipes you'd had ever seen. But despite the highly unlikely odds, I, I turned to some of these niche yard sale-esque apps, looking for any old pipe stuff or, or collectibles. I recall finding some little nuggets of pipe smoking gold, but nothing crazy. However, one thing that I do remember and quite vividly was a posting of two leather pipe smoking tobacco purses. They were small, one green, one brown, and they appeared to be that, that faux leather, but when I zoomed into the photo, I saw a stamp. Pressed into the top flaps of the purses was inscribed, Mr. Brock, alongside a little pipe within the logo, and I turned to Google and learned more about the historic company that is Mr. Brock Pipes. I loved the history and I felt that I had something neat here. I made the purchase immediately, but the private seller never sent it to me. Quite unfortunate. But fate had me making YouTube videos, hosting a podcast, and eventually the, the deities of, of pipe them both old and new led me once more to Mr. Brock Pipes. When they reached out to me on my Instagram and asked if I would be willing to show a couple pipes on the channel. Knowing a little of their history from my research years back, I was undoubtedly excited. They sent me a package and gave me a free reign to say whatever I like. And this is an important piece for me in order to keep that authentic dialogue between you and I. It also speaks a great deal to Mr. Bronx's confidence in their work, which I also do appreciate. But let us first dive into the history of Mr. Bronx Company. There in Pemyshla, Poland, the Mr. Brog factory sits, since the late 1940s in fact, following a harrowing war, when pipe makers Wiktor Winarski and Zbigniew 
Zignu, Zib, 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 Started a pipe company called Wooden Accessories and Plastic Products. Now, not the coolest name of all time, but a name nonetheless. However, it was in the 1990s that the company concluded that the heritage and the importance of honoring one's origins weighed far less than the weight of a bad name. The company then changed its name to, to Mr. Brock, a derivative of some of the owners and, and lead carver's names. I tried to memorize the pronunciation and failed if, if you couldn't tell. But the takeaway here is the initials were MRB, stamped on the pipes in the early 1990s. Eventually this led to Mr. Brog being stamped and by 1995, the name was official. At the same time, the company started naming and numbering all of their pipes. Today, they've sold over 2 million affordable pipes to, to pipe smokers across the entire globe. Historically, Europe and really Eastern Europe has been an incredibly densely populated home of, of pipe smokers. Perhaps through law and regulation, that figure is a little bit more balanced with the, the increasing interest here in the United States, but the point is that you can expect pipes to be smoked all over there. Well, since the company's original inception, the Mr. Brog team wanted to find a way to, to bring pipes to everyone who wanted them, to include the folks who, who didn't particularly love paying the cost of briar, something that was very scarce, especially after World War II. The company settled on pear wood, an excellent wood for pipe making, according to current owner Mr. Zabiev. Bernard Bernardchik? Yeah, I think that's right. Mr. Bernardchik explains that pear wood is quite dense and, and really has no air holes. It's also extremely prevalent in Poland with thousands of acres of, of pear orchards, allowing for a lower cost. It's also poetic as the pear wood is used in most wood furniture and in wood products within the country. Now there is a drawback to pear wood for smoking pipes and it's the fact that pear is not the greatest against heat. The greatest is most certainly briar, so they say, but that doesn't necessarily mean pear wood is bad. Think clay, horrible for heat, great for smoking. Briar, great for heat, great for smoking. Well, pear wood, good for heat, Great for smoking. Mr. Brog produces around 50,000 pipes a year, with only 25% of that coming to the US. The factory has a select few of master carvers that each produce about 30 pipes a day. Now, they're not androids working 24 7, but they do have some machinery to assist the process. Often do the masters of Brog sit down and, and design new pipes. A machine will then produce the, the drilled out bowl and shank, and then the rest of the process is completed by hand. Despite being a factory style pipe company, they truly possess a small business outlook. They are fervent in their endeavor to keep pipes available and affordable. Today, you can purchase all of their pipes through some of the bigger pipe websites, some of the smaller pipe websites, uh, sometimes in stores, but really Amazon.com. Now, typically that, that last one tends to raise some flags, and I do understand that. Here in the pipe community, especially those among the YTPC, tend to turn folks away from, quote, Amazon pipes. Well, friends, Mr. Brog is the exception here. Just like if Peterson were to sell some of their pipes on Amazon, which you can absolutely find on there, I actually really support this business move as it provides the pipe smoking hopeful to get access to great pipes that are beautiful, effective, and inexpensive. The package I received contained a wide variety of artistry. I wonder at the once blank canvases that, that were these briar and pear wood pipes. Yes, Mr. Bronk does include the use of Italian and Mediterranean briar into their line of pipes not just pear. But let's do a little montage of some of the pipes, huh? I mean, look at these, look at these f f megalodon sized pipes. <laughs> these are like textbook rich Esserman pipes, big pipe guy pipes. They're massive, man, and, and, and they're really fun. They really are. 
And that's not to mention the naming convention here, which is also great. Here with these three massive pipes, we have the Galway, the Duncan Duke, and the XL Giant. Okay, that one not creative, but at least it's honest. And we like that. As an aside, I googled Duncan Duke and, and couldn't find much of meaning here. I'm really hoping it's, it was just some master Polish craftsman who, who looked at this finished work and said, hmm, Duncan Duke. I don't know who Duncan is, nor if he's in fact a Duke, but this pipe looks like it would in fact befit a man of such a name. You'll also notice on the pieces different stampings. Some have a really unique and, and cute stamp. I'm assuming it's perhaps a, a particular crafter within the factory, or maybe it's just simply for added flair. Either way, I love it. I have a pair of pears bleh, here that Get Wiped absolutely cherishes. Admittedly, I found them meh at first and was looking to hand them off, perhaps in a giveaway or something. But man, They've really grown on me. They've really grown on me quite well. These two old army pipes feature a beautiful gold army mount and a wonderful red and green stain that actually complements the lack of grain on the pear wood pipes. You also can't help but appreciate the dying art of, of wind caps. These wind caps are simple, effective, and contrast elegantly with the gold mounts. Great pieces for smoking on a lunt or maybe a busy public house. package that Mr. Brock kindly sent my way also contained a handsome church warden, another pair of wood with a military mount. I'll always admire a good church warden pipe. While they're so impractical, they do command a pretty appearance and, and really a magical aura when smoking. Lastly, we will touch on Mr. Brog's best work. Brog briars are, are not something to overlook. Again, I know the reservations of, of purchasing pipes on Amazon, but man, these do well to eradicate the, I guess, dated thinking. The briar pipes are just gorgeous. Now, in my collection, there lies two bents, the console and the frog. And a straight billiard, the attache. Dude! These are so alluring, like these compete heavily and, and maybe even beat out many of the, the Petersons and the Savanillis. These three pipes feature this lovely silver accent piece. I think this is incredibly unique too. It, it's reminiscent of like, I don't know, like a, like a king's ring, a ring that a king of a medieval society might wear, and they have them on their briars. The billiard here is just stellar in the care and in the design. The dichotomy here of the rustication and the smooth is perfect for this piece. Looking closely just under the kingly ring, there features a super narrow ring of the smooth. It's simply brilliant. This is by far a contender for, for my favorite Brog piece. To me, however, this pipe's only opponent is an equally attractive, freehand pipe. Yes, Mr. Brog's craftsmen include a line of freehands too, or at least a line that is dedicated to some of their higher top artisanal work. The line is named Winsent. Now, I'm not sure if Winsent is the man who makes these pipes or perhaps just named after a gentleman in the country or the factory's history, or if I'm even pronouncing it correctly, but they're especially remarkable. I freaking love it, man. This, this free hand here is made of an Italian briar. The plateau is earthen and graceful. The, the bend is just perfect for me and the grain and the stain are, are stunning.
Lastly, you'll find an even kinglier king's ring, a gold band with silver end pieces. If you place this on a table at a pipe show, it's getting picked up by a hundred hands. I am so confident in this pipe's beauty and function that I deliberately decided to bring it forth to the Las Vegas International Pipe Show this past October. Pipe shows are known for their, their presentation of artisan pipes. They're also known for the connections and, and interactions made amongst the, the pipe smoking community. And therefore, folks tend to bring out their big guns, meaning their, their nicest artisan pipes, the, the flex pieces. And after all, it's a special occasion, right? Well, I too brought such pipes, but I made sure to include this piece from Winston at Brog Pipes. I actually brought two Winston pipes from Mr. Brog. I didn't bring any other factory pipes. None of my Pete's, my Costello's, or, or even my Dunhill's. The other Winston was just as incredible, one that my wife begged me to keep. But alas, I did hand it off to my right-hand man, the producer guy of the Get Pipe Podcast. Episodes every Thursday. And together we, we brought these pieces out to the Hoover Dam. Smoked it in front of hundreds of people. And man, we returned to the smoking rooms that night and we continued to smoke those pieces. And they had zero issues. No gurgle, just, just gave us such joy. I'll close this one up by summarizing the grand line of pipes that Mr. Brog offers. These pipes are very affordable. They make excellent gifts for folks who, who are curious about pipe smoking. Imagine a new guy holding, holding this old army in his hand. He doesn't know or care if it's briar or pear. What he wants is a, a functional, beautiful wooden pipe. And the fact that this is just $24 on Amazon is almost unthinkable. That console from before, just under $55. That rivals the Morgan Bones, an unfinished pipe by just some five to $10. And you all know I love my bones. While my Vincent pipe is pushing the, the range of 125, you can find plenty of other beautiful briars ranging from that 55 mark to the 80s, 90s. But again, what's not to like about a $30 pair pipe? And in truth, I think this take will overall be quite hot in the community. But I want to remind the folks of the YTPC, the GPPC, the, the pipe smokers of the world, that we're all here to smoke pipes. In my quest to, to learn more, produce more, and dive deeper into the sphere of pipe smoking, from expanding my collections, my palette, my awareness, I hope to never be too good for any pipe. Even the fake cheapo pipes that you'll find on Amazon outside of Mr. Brog, and a pipe is a pipe. And if the inexpensive price point brings but one more pipe smoker to the world, that's a good pipe. I'll leave you all with a quote from Brog owner, Mr. Zabief, Bernard Schick. There isn't a greater feeling for an artist than to be able to express the imagination and have the world enjoy it. My vision leaves my hand and does its job for 100 to 200 years in someone else's hand. This is what drives the Mr. Brog brand. That is why we constantly have new designs, new colors, and finishes. Please consider Mr. Brog for yourself, a friend, a stranger. I have no discount code to offer, nor any affiliate link to provide you. I will make zero dollars for any pipes purchased from watching this video. I made this video because I appreciate what Mr. Brog provides, and I freaking love pipe smoking, man. Thank you so much, Mr. Brog. I think I might be keeping most of these pieces. Uh, I was hoping to give them away, but I, I really do enjoy them. And lastly, thank you all for watching until the very, very end. You can share your thoughts in the, in the comments below. I read every comment, even the mean ones. After all, I'm the one who, who made the video, you know, recorded it, held the camera when I'm making the B-roll, edited it, uploaded it. Yeah, that's me. If you want more content, be sure to follow and rate my weekly pipe smoking podcast, The Get Pipe Podcast a show dedicated to the folks who like fun. We feature a number of short stories about pipe smoking, pipe smoking hypotheticals, and host a number of incredible guests like Neil Osborne of the IGPC, Quinn Crawford, a blender at the Country Squire, Miko Frost, the unhinged and maniacal artisan pipe maker from Finland, and several others with many more on the way. You can also connect with me further by simply subscribing to my YouTube channel right here or heading over to Instagram at get underscore pipes, drop a follow. And if that's not enough, you can join our galactic get 
pipe pipe club oh uh, the pipe club that transcends even the national and even the international clubs oh out there we even have aliens invited none have accepted just click the free no dues discord link in the description below you can hold an alias use your first name or, or whatever you want we have bi-monthly video pipe meetings where i jump in and, and probably complain about something and then in turn get made fun of by everyone else in the call more content is coming but please bear with me this will hopefully hold you over because you have just been piped and until the next piping i'm out i'm out of i'm out of funny ways to get up out of the seat so sue me short shorts sue me again Also just realized that my light died halfway through that video, so I don't know, sue me a third time, sorry.